This is the second narrated presentation for Biology 101, Module 1, Introduction to Biology. In this presentation, there will be an introduction to the concept of classifying living organisms into different groups based on their characteristics, an outline of the processes that cause changes in the environment over long periods of time, and a discussion on Darwin's studies on evolution. Additionally, there will be an explanation of how specific evolutionary processes such as natural selection cause populations of organisms to change characteristics or behaviors and a more detailed look at the major groups of living creatures or the domains as well as the rules relating to the classifying system of organism also known as taxonomy. All organisms can be broken down into levels of organization or levels of complexity. Each level of organization builds on the level below it. Matter is defined as anything that has mass or weight and takes up space. That is, anything that is not the vacuum of outer space. The basic units of matter are known as atoms. Some different examples of atoms include carbon and oxygen, which can combine to form a molecule of carbon dioxide. Atoms and the molecules they combine to form come together to form cells. Cells are the basic unit of life. Some organisms, like bacteria and yeasts, are made of a single cell only. However, other organisms, including plants and animals, are comprised of many cells that work together. Tissues are groups of similar cells that work together to perform a particular function. Organs are, collected, are collections of tissues that work together to perform one or more functions. The stomach is an example of an organ that is responsible for producing acid and enzymes to break down food that you eat. Organ systems are groups of organs that work together to carry out different tasks. The stomach works with the other organisms of the digestive system in order to break down food, absorb the nutrients of your body to use as energy, and eliminate the wastes you cannot absorb. An organism, then, is the collection of all organ systems that carry out all of the processes needed for an organism to survive and reproduce. Levels of biological organization may be extended beyond an individual organism. A population is a group of organisms that live together. Populations include only members of a single species. A community is a group of populations of different species that live together and interact with each other. An ecosystem refers to all living things as well as the non-living things in a particular area. Biotic is the term that is used to refer to anything that is living or was at one point living, such as a rotting tree that houses insects. Abiotic is the term that is used to refer to anything that has never been living, rocks, rivers, sand, for example. Finally, all ecosystems, that is, all living and non-living things found on planet Earth, are known as a biosphere. This diagram shows representative examples of each of the different levels of organization. Atoms can combine to form different types of molecules, like fats, sugars, and proteins. Those molecules come together to form cells, the basic unit of life. In multicellular organisms, like plants and animals, similar cells may work together in tissues to perform a particular function. Organs, such as the lung, are composed of different types of tissues that work together to perform particular tasks. The lungs are responsible for gathering oxygen and expelling carbon dioxide. An organism is a collection of organ systems that carry out the processes of life. Populations are groups of individuals of the same species that live in a similar area. Communities are all of the individuals of different species that live and interact with each other. And finally, an ecosystem is all of the biotic, living, and abiotic, non-living things in an environment. 
and the, bios the biosphere includes all ecosystems found on Earth. Cells are classified into two groups, either prokaryotes or eukaryotes. Prokaryotes are simpler in morphology. They do not contain many of the internal structures called organelles that eukaryote cells do. Prokaryotes can contain small circular segments of DNA found inside or outside of the region known as the plasmid that, that may be passed from cell to cell. Eukaryotes are more complex than prokaryotes. They contain many internal structures that prokaryotes do not, such as mitochondria, chloroplasts, and true nucleus, which is where the DNA is found. Let's look at these two images to see the major features of a prokaryotic and a eukaryotic cell. Notice the DNA of a prokaryote is not contained in a nucleus. Rather, it is free-floating inside of the cell in an area known as the nucleoid. Prokaryotes also contain small segments of DNA outside of the, nucle the nucleoid. These small segments of DNA are called plasmids. Eukaryotes are noticeably more complex. Their DNA is contained inside of a membrane-bound membrane nucleus, and they contain many internal structures not found in prokaryotes. Ecosystems, remember, include everything biotic and abiotic, living and non-living, and they are dynamic or constantly changing. These changes may be due to natural events, like a hurricane causing trees to fall over, or even islands to shift, or may be caused by human activities like building a dam to flood a lake. Sir Charles Darwin used this knowledge of changing ecosystems to help develop the theory of evolution. Evolution is the scientific explanation for why and how species adapt to their changing environment. The evolutionary process seems like common sense in modern time because we know that ecosystems may change dramatically over time. However, Darwin's discoveries were groundbreaking because people did not have the same scientific knowledge we possess today. Specifically, Darwin was not aware of the genetic material contained in an organism that mirrors evolutionary relationships. One key process in Darwin's theory of evolution is natural selection. Natural selection is the term that describes how only the most successful or fit organisms will reproduce offspring in the next generation. Natural selection explains why dandelions and many other plants produce an incredible amount of seeds. There is simply not enough space in an ecosystem for every seed to germinate. Therefore, the plants that produce the most seeds have the greatest likelihood of their offspring developing and passing on their genes to the next generation. Over many thousands and millions of years, natural selection causes species to adapt and populations that are separated from each other and face different environmental changes eventually separate into different species. In review, there are several hierarchical levels of organization, each building on the one before it. The levels of organization include atoms that form molecules which make cells. The cell is the basic unit of life. Different cell types form tissues. Different tissues form organs. Different organs work together in organ systems, and all organ systems make up an individual organism. Populations are made of the individuals of the same species that live in the same area. Communities are populations of different species that live and interact with each other. Ecosystems are composed of all living and non-living things in an environment, and a biosphere is a collection of all ecosystems. We also learned in this portion of our module that there are two types of cells prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes are simple cells with free-floating DNA.
some of which is in small fragments known as plasmids. Eukaryotes are more complex, with DNA contained in a nucleus and possess many internal structures. Ecosystems are dynamic or ever-changing, which causes the organisms that live in them to adapt over time. The theory of evolution is the scientific explanation for how and why species change. Natural selection is a major driving force behind the creation of new species.